Anyway, all right. Welcome to another episode of my podcast, Uzi Podcast, whatever you want to call it. My guest again, Eric Prush, very entertaining, very smart, very knowledgeable. This is going to be a good one again. I hope you guys are going to enjoy it because I am going to. Hell yeah. All right, my man. So yeah, man, let's talk about certain topics. And I have a little post-it and I wrote down some stuff. I came in, I saw this. No, we didn't have any post-its last time. So we got kind of all over the place, but it still worked. But now I feel like we have some very specific things we could rant about Somewhat here. specific, you know. So I was in the gym today and... uh you know, just talking to some rand normal, normal guys saying random conversation. I mean, saying, you know, he brought up that he's like, you know, he's looking at this young hookah boy. He goes, and this must have spiked something in his head. He goes, you know, social media, oh boy. right? Yeah. Could be information overload for young kids. It's true. Because he goes, this one kid was like, you know, I'm doing an ice bath now. I'm getting shredded from the ice bath and it's not this. And then he goes two weeks later, he's like, you know. I'm only eating protein and no carbs and minimal fats, but I could feel my body growing so much more. Carbs are useless. Now for someone like you and I who've done everything, right? Social media and everything being out there, it's so easy for us to learn, but we know what works because we've done so many different things and applied so many different things. Have a filter. Young guys haven't had the time in their life or experience to try everything and know it works. So it could be information overload and very negative in a certain way. Even, yeah, you're going to try this and try this and try this. But we knew probably we were educated in the right manner, tried it, you know, worked and worked. But now what the point of what I'm saying is just way too much mm -hmm. of controversial information, this and that back and forth. Do you agree with me? Yeah, you know, it's funny. I'm probably going to date myself here, but... Pre-social media, I would read EliteFTS.com, T Nation were probably the two best places you could get like training information, but it was always like an article a day and they had the message boards and everything. And even then, I felt like it was too much information. I know. And I had to have like a rule like, okay, if I'm going to try a diet or if I'm going to try a program, first of all, you got to finish the program. You don't program hop. So if, if Christian Thibodeau puts up a program and it's 12 weeks, you will follow it for 12 weeks, okay? That, but you have to force yourself to do it, though, because you're always on to the next thing. If I'm going to try a diet or a macro split, it's got to be for a minimum of 12 weeks. And really, that's still almost nothing. You think about how long you've been training. A fucking year is nothing to a lifelong lifter. right? 12, a, weeks, a, is, 12 it, weeks is a fucking yes, spec, like a, a year is nothing. You know, you could spend a year in powerlifting. You could spend three years in powerlifting working on a weak point, just triceps to get your bench up. And still, your bench moves only 10 pounds. Yeah, right? I know. But I think it's a real problem. With my clients, I, I, I can't live with them, but I kind of tell them, like, don't even look at that shit. We have a system, and most there, any good system will work, provided you commit to it. Uh, you do what your coach says, and you, you believe in the program. Guys were seeing great results believing in shitty programs just because yeah, they ate a lot of food, they rested a lot, like we spoke about last time, and they fucking trained hard. So, Mark Bell, works. So, so I think it was Mark Bell posted something one time and said, or it might have been Stan Efferding, either one, okay. about doesn't matter the program, right? There's the, all programs out there. It's a matter how hard you push yourself in the program. Of course. The, you know, the benefit you'll get out is how hard you push yourself. Mm -hmm. There is no magical program. You know, they all have specific needs, yes. But like it's unfair to the person who created the program. But like you, you, know, you have to see it out to the front to back to see the end result. You can't stop at week five yeah. and say it didn't fucking work. Who knows what's gonna happen at week eight and nine? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. The body takes time to develop. It's like all of a sudden you might get that ramp and be like, holy fuck, this was the desired effect mm -hmm. or the strength you know, the physique look what I was looking for. Yeah. That's why you are 100% right. You have to see it from front to back fully. But like also, fucking 12 weeks, bro, and the training fucking life yeah, it's nothing. is nothing, yeah. bro. That's a fucking flip. Yeah. That's a trial and error. Oh, yeah, that's absolutely. What that is. Yeah, absolutely. You know what I mean? And, and it's so easy to, okay, I'm going to read about a, an upper, lower, west side split if you're a power lifter. And then you buy, like when I was a lifter, high frequency squatting was the thing. People were like trying to recycle the Bulgarian method. Now you got guys maxing out literally seven days a week with the squat, which I thought was crazy back then. And I, I, stand, I stand by that for sure. And it's like, when you're reading these books, you're like, well, no, I, I'm going to drop this for this. And it, it's just nonsense. Like, it takes a long time to figure out. The only thing that I would say is if you're looking for a, a program that works for you, and this is, again, this is why I like talking to you, because I come from a strength athlete perspective. You come from, like, a bodybuilding perspective mm -hmm. at, at its core. But obviously, we've worked with people. There's a lot of inroads yeah. there. If you're a lifter and you want to get strong, you should always find a lifter with similar levers to you, similar limb length. 
And I, I would say if you're built like me and you're squatting like uh, like like a Bulgarian lifter, maybe drop it immediately. Don't even do the 12 weeks because you're not built to do it. Olympic lifters are built a certain way. Great deadlifters are, are, are built a certain way. So you should definitely look at what the person looks like. Are they actually a similar body type to you? Then I think it's totally okay to hop, hop a program, but you still have to stick with what they're doing. You know, I think I stuck with a lot of programs back in the day that were designed for people who weren't built like me. Gotcha. And if I had figure that out a little bit earlier, I think I would have put up much better. It takes numbers. time to figure that out. You were younger. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You know, it's funny. You just, I mean, you know, um, about strength. I wasn't even going to bring this up. Garage strength. Dane, what's his name? Bald oh, guy. Do you know what I'm talking yes, about? Yes. So he said something maybe a week ago. He goes, my deadlift went up 150 pounds and I front squatted previously. For that. He goes, I didn't, did, didn't, did not deadlift for a year, right? Mm -hmm. He goes, I front squatted every day mm -hmm. for a year. And then when I went to deadlift, went 150 pounds. What I, what I caught of that was, yes, I believe that the front squat made you deadlift without deadlifting, but you front squatted every day. Mm -hmm. What's your, like front squatting every day, I guess, low volume, heavy, not a tremendous time under tension where you're destroying the muscles uh -huh. specifically for strength. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You can do perform a front squat daily then. And any type of squat, any anterior loaded squat, like obviously you know this, where the weight is in front of you, be it a front squat or a zercher squat, is way easier to recover from. You're just going to be less weight. Not loaded on you know, when, central So many time. times when you have a bar on your back, even if you're built like fucking Tom Platts, there's going to be a mild hip hinge type of aspect to it. Your spinal erectors are going to get lit up, and then that really affects your deadlift. If you're an athlete, it affects your ability to move, like I was saying before about jiu-jitsu. So I think uh, when you put yourself in a position where you have the least amount of leverage, that's usually, first of all, a great way to get stronger at a bigger lift, with, like, without question. And on top of that, like, it's just easier to recover from. You know, and for sure, if I was going to pick a squat variation to do frequently, it would be a front squat. Not a back squat. squat. No way. Because no I could definitely tell you, like, if I front squat to back squat, right, back squatting definitely destroys me way more. Of course. I'm, like, I'm just so much more wrecked. Of course. The next day and the following days after. You know who Dan Green is? Of course. Yeah. Dan came down to my old job at a seminar and, you know. I would run into him at, at meets and get a chance to pick his brain. I wrapped his knees for a meet one time, one of his world records. It was pretty cool. And he's, he kind of broke down his training system to me in a way that made a lot of sense. He did a lot of simple compound movements, but he basically said he prioritizes in the off season lifts that are comparable to the competition lift, but where you have less leverage, right? Where like you're so much weaker in this position that if you get stronger in it, the bigger leverage position will certainly Don't lose Simmons train like that? Yes. Uh, later on, because in the beginning, those guys were just fucking crazy. No, then, I, then, I listened because I was listening yeah. when they decided they would do things around the main, they wouldn't perform the competition lift. So Dan they would, would rotate, that's great, because actually Dan has an article, you should look this up, it's old as hell now, but he had an article that was kind of critiquing West Side, but in a healthy way. Mm -hmm. He was just against, I think, a lot of the frequency of variation of the exercises. So when Dan came out with the Boss Barbell Method, it was about like a four or five day, day week training split, and he would stick with, say, the front squat for at least a month. And his philosophy was, if you're a low bar back squatter, this is the position where you have the most leverage, a wide stance, low bar back squat. Move okay, the, Move it. Exactly. But how can we get that up? Well, if your front squat goes up, okay, your high bar back squat will go up. If your high bar back squat goes up, your low, low bar back will absolutely, absolutely go, up. go up. And when it came to the deadlift, he was a sumo puller. His philosophy was the conventional builds the sumo, which I agree, but it's definitely not the other way around. And then the deficit deadlift, pulling off of standing on top know, of the plate or something, crazy. builds the conventional, which then builds the sumo. So 12, 16 weeks out of a meet, he'd be doing deficit That's pulls. That's what he would do to yeah. make that easier. Exactly. And then, and then you get closer to the meet, you start just practicing the technique of the competition lift. Because initially, even if your base of strength is way bigger because of everything that you just did in the offseason, you might have gotten bigger physically. Your levers are going to feel off. Your technique is going to be a little He's crazy strong. He looks he's, like a bodybuilder. He's so. incredible, dude. He's... I've never seen Vin a thicker person. Yeah, like he's, he's if you shot him with buckshot, it may not penetrate vital organs. Like his he, muscles are like this. <laughs> not. When he stands sideways, you're like, damn, like what the? What and the he's fuck? just crazy strong, yeah. and he's in shape too. Yes, that's yes. the crazy thing. Freakishly mobile. He do do to do the deficit deadlifts like he did. Mm -hmm. You have to have super loose hips. The way yeah. you squat like that, I'm like, dude, this guy is pretty flexible yeah. at his size. How tall is he? I mean, five nine. Maybe. He's not an overly tall guy. No, dude. And he's, I watched him. I was in the sauna with him cutting when he was trying to cut to 220 for the 220 knee wrap world record. I thought he was going to die. Trying like, to get that low. Dude, it was like, he remember he called his wife, I'm not bragging here, but he was like, oh, 
Eric's here because we had, we had been out to dinner with them at seminars and he was like, she just wanted to know that he was not there alone. It was like an LA fitness in outside of Orlando, Florida, where the Raw Unity meet was going on. We had a couple of lifters competing. Yeah. Dude, I, I felt terrible for him. Just one of our guys. The strength's got to suffer though when you do that. He though. had a really rough meet. He still set the record and still won, but he went like five for nine. You know, had a really, really rough day. It was day. bad for him. He can't Dude, do it. He probably never did that it's, again. It's crazy. I mean, on top of that, man, he was walking around like 255, 260. Yeah, it's too much of a drop for strength to do that's that. That's a- astronomical. That's like when a fighter drops too much weight, bro. They're like a flea ball. Yeah. They, you even... know, it's a good idea to go to, instead, you know, just there at 170, it's a good idea to try to go to 155. The performance goes out <laughs> the window, Drift even though they can make it. What it's the same wrong? thing. Yeah. Spin the wheels. I want to talk about some other stuff. Oh, God. What do we got here? All right. John Cena. All right. I'm looking forward to this. You're looking forward I'm to looking, it. I, I, honestly, I really want to hear Drift to say about this. Yeah. So... We both know. <laughs> we both know there was no way, bro, that you were natural your entire life. I do get it that, you know, you are an idol to kids and maybe that's what you have to project. I guess whatever. Sure. You know, but let's make no mistake, bro. You were definitely not natural just due to the fact of one, you and I both know what anabolic steroids looks like. And there are people out there who are very big who you would swear take steroids who are not. Yeah. We both know people like that. Then again, though, he is the disparity between his physique now to then is big, Mm -hmm. is a big spread. Mm -hmm. He was a lot bigger, thicker, had that juice look. Mm -hmm. And bro, like, I know the career's over. You're not taking, you know, the 700 milligrams of test. There's no need to. You probably are taking TRD. Maybe you're not at all. Maybe you're not. Maybe you're maybe taking a clomiphene and you bumped up to 800. But there's no question. You had definitely taken test and taken gear back then. So I'm a lifelong, I mean, I'm wearing a pro wrestling shirt right now. I'm a lifelong pro wrestling fan. I don't think people understand how difficult it is for these guys. Maybe it's less so now because the top stars will get like, one of my friends who works for WWE, they'll give you like a Winnebago if you're a big dude to drive cross country. But like, you don't meal prep, okay? Like, Scott Hall used to say he would only eat, it was Razor Ramon, at a, a Waffle House because the guy would cook the food in front of you. And so you could tell him like, no butter. No, no, don't cook any butter or just one tablespoon of butter. And he would basically spit out his macros in terms of servings to the guy cooking it so he could look good. But by his own admission, he was the only guy doing it. There wasn't a lot of people that were doing that, which means how do you stay lean? You obviously train your ass off. Wrestling can be exhausting depending on your style. It's going to beat you up no matter what. And you're taking gear. Let's just be totally honest. And they're probably going to, to take bigger doses because they ha- you're wearing your underwear every night for a living. You have to look good. Good and Vince year. McMahon is fucking jacked. So you're talking about a guy that he's not gonna have any sympathy for you. He's out there training. He's 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 doing his thing. I just don't understand the circumstances. We were saying this before we started recording. Behind him saying he's natural, is someone pushing him to say that, or is he just offering it? Because The Rock has done the same thing. We're just independent of this. He's like, I'm natural. Bro, stop it. Has he said that yeah. he's natural? Yeah, dude, you can look it up. Come on, he bro. He's so jacked. I've never heard him say that no, before. No, dude, he had a whole, he claimed he took steroids when he was like 20, and that's why he had the, the, the gyno surgery back in like the, yeah, dude, bro. the guy is so fucking jacked, and he's like 50 years old. He looks infinitely better than he did when he was in his late 20s, early 30s. Unbelievable. Dude, so in his defense, this, my friend met him before and did some like whatever you know social media thing and he says he's a big guy don't get me wrong but he's more lean jacked has like like a slender build but dude make no mistake bro he looked the the hardness the roundness the fullness you you take steroids bro and like in the traps in the shoulders definitely yeah it is you see you definitely take maybe just trt dosage with a sprinkle of something at certain points yes Dude, you're going to tell me in like, you know, the, the Fast and the Furious movie, like Fast Five, but he was considerably bigger and Pain more and full. Game with Dude, Mark Wahlberg. He was jacked. Yeah. There was definitely a little sprinkle of Master on or Trend Light in there or something yeah. with a little fucking something else. I, I get There's it. There's no doubt. Yeah, I get it. Like, sure, he just came back and did WrestleMania. Like, but can probably they admit did that? do a little bit I mean, extra. I mean, they probably like, if all of a sudden they'd be like, bro, yeah, I, was using, I can't say that. Who knows? Maybe they would. I don't know. Like, bro, honestly, obviously, but I can't tell millions of people. Yo, also this, right? The masses don't understand things like you and I at all. That's a great point. For instance, right? Like, people think steroids are black tar heroin, right? They don't understand it's medical. Yeah, they do. And I have family that, you know, whatever. They like, they think steroids are just steroids. Mm -hmm. You know, cocaine, steroids, uh, fucking crystal methamphetamine. 
They don't understand it's medications. They used to be medications that were replaced by medications with less side effects. Yeah. But at the end of the day, it's just medicines. Yeah. They're meant to be in the human body. I don't think smoking something out of tinfoil was ever meant to be in the human body. <laughs> Do you understand what I'm <laughs> saying? I totally understand. Yeah. You know, so the so the misconception for the mass is this is why they have to lie. If yeah. everybody understand and understood like you and I did, they probably would not lie. And also the the youth factor. They're idols to kids. There is an element when you're become very high level at something, and I'll give us both a pat on the back. High level coaches, we've been in this for a very, very long time. You forget what it's like to know nothing. Right, like you know, and I, I feel this. If you work with someone for a long time, I just trained athletes who had a good base in physical movement. And when I moved to Gen Pop, I was like, oh my god, I forgot what it was like to work with people who can't fucking move at all. Right, so that point, there's probably people, yeah, like we're sitting here thinking, like, who cares if you take 200 milligrams of test a week or 150? Like, we know how hard it is to look like that. We know the demands on your body. We know you make your money this way. We get it. No one is judging you, but. What percentage are we of the general population that watches his movie? Yeah, minute. Minute, minute. bro. Yeah, it doesn't matter. That's the right? thing why they yeah. lie. Yeah. That's the one thing. Yeah. Like, think we have the minute population should be like, dude, of course you do. Yeah. They probably have to lie, but like, you know, he's probably like, I fucking feel like an idiot saying this right well, now. But, 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 guys... Let's say this though. Arnold was open about it though. But he was never like, he never was saying I'm taking TRT. Let's say like when he was doing like the third Terminator movie when he was like in his 50s. But he didn't run from taking it when he was a bodybuilder. I mean, do you think that's the same thing? Or is it because he's bodybuilding? It's kind of like, it's a different thing than a Hollywood movie. Different thing. Back then, steroids weren't like known. And, you know, I think what gave steroids that horrible fucking that like, you know, that uh, negative aura to it. Ben was, Johnson. That was a spike. But I guess it was like, like the 80s going into the 90s, the Ben Johnson, then the baseball era. Yeah. The baseball era really catapulted the yeah. fucking negative with steroids because steroids were used in sports forever. They're yeah. still used. Of course. Sports Absolutely. Now, yeah. you know, but what people don't say, like me and I could get into the science about how ester change and like if people do not know what the cream or clear are, there right? We, do, yeah. we know. Yeah. So, well, let's go on that topic yeah. then. All right. If people think out there that, that athletes, professional athletes are not using steroids, all oh, they're all drug tested. You're crazy. Just to let you know what the cream and clear are. They were drugs that existed already, but scientists, this is a billion dollar industry, figured out a way to keep that drug as active, but just attach a different atom or hydrogen atom mm -hmm. to the structure to make it as effective as a drug itself, but undetectable. Now this with the drug testing of anabolic steroids, Eric knows this already. Mm -hmm. Why it's easy to test for other drugs, amphetamines, test for amphetamine, cocaine, you know, uh, THC. When it comes to anabolic steroids, there are so many separate strands they're most like sports sanctions are not testing for it unless they're a multi-million dollar, billion dollar issue. So it's too expensive. Too expensive. Yeah. All right. So if you change the structure slightly and keep it active, which these scientists do, it's undetectable. Yeah. What was the cream? I think one was a, 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 a change in structure to trend and one was, was it testosterone maybe? I think so. I, it's been a while. It's, it's funny you bring this up because I was just... You said you played baseball when you were a kid, yes. right? Yeah. So for me, I didn't play. I played Little League, but I wasn't like a high school baseball player. But my family loved baseball. So, of course, everybody was all like up in arms over the steroid era and, and whatnot. Cream in the Clear famously taken by Barry Bonds and a lot of the, the, the Balco athletes. And I always found it interesting when his – if you haven't seen this, I, I would love this. This would be actually great content for both of us to put out. Um, years ago, his stack got leaked. Now it wasn't. So it said thing. BLB Barry Lamar Bonds. It didn't say Barry Bonds and his like fucking social security number on it. But it was it it was a very well constructed cycle. I saw that. Yeah, and it was like it was like testosterone, prima bolin. He was taking insulin. Uh, like, HGH. Yeah, bro, like, this, this, was, this was like a, shit. this was like a, this was like a real deal shit. But it's funny because. You, a lot of the stuff that kind of makes steroids look negative was, oh, it actually hurts your career. It makes you worse. But like any drug, if you take too much, you train improperly. So I found this YouTube channel. I forget the name. The guy's doing like steroid era baseball revisionism. And he's trying to show like the steroids don't matter as much. These guys are still great. And I agree with him in the macro, right? If the pitcher's throwing you a hundred mile an hour fastball, he's on steroids and you're on steroids. But what the fuck are we really talking about here? But he was pointing to, well, Mark McGuire took gear and Jose Canseco took gear and they got injured all the time. And I actually commented on the guy's channel. I was like, I would love to talk to you about this because you're presupposing that all steroids do the same thing, that all people take the same doses, that all people train the same way. And that's just simply not true. You look at someone like Canseco or McGuire, these guys were fucking huge. 
like six foot four, okay? Dude, McGuire had to be 270 by the time he retired. He was jacked. He was huge. That wasn't Andrew. Yeah, that's just yeah, yeah. Okay, Canseco was training. It was actually very interesting with the Miami University, the Hurricanes, mm-hmm. uh, track team in the offseason so he could steal bases better. But he weighed 260. So he's running these crazy sprints with, that, with your, your body's just going to totally fall apart on him. Canseco had injury problems, and McGuire had injury problems. Well, McGuire's brother was a very good bodybuilder. And he was getting training advice and gear from his brother no who went way. public I about this. I did not this. know yeah. that. His brother is jacked, dude. Or at least was jacked. Jay McGuire, I think his name is. And he went public. They had a family falling out, which is he fucked up. He went public and sold yeah. his brother out. And he told, he was telling, dude, he was talking God. doses, compounds. Yeah, I'm, I'm serious. They dude, paid him a lot of money. Yeah, yeah, the, 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 the whole, oh the whole nine. But you realize, like, okay, Mark was training like a bodybuilder, and he's a baseball player. Yeah. Well, let's look at, at Barry Bonds. Barry's training like an athlete. He's going to a lab that's working with Olympic tier athletes, taking the right doses, doing the right exercises. What happens to him? At 35 years old, he becomes the greatest hitter fucking ever, okay? And is pretty much tearing the league up until they start testing for drugs. Then he has to come off of him, and then his body starts falling apart again. It was a combination then by, you know, a couple years, they they wound the ball tight, which was unnecessary. Just, you know, men, the home runs went off the charts. That's awesome. But I remember Barry Bonds, what he used to do, which is an oddity for a guy who hit a lot of home runs. He used to choke up a lot on the ball, and he was yeah. an inside ball hitter. And yeah. I remember he hit a ball so hard one time at the new whatever. What what park is that that the Giants played? It, so. I, I know the name was Doesn't Pacific matter. Bell Park. I know Doesn't they changed it to something else. But he hit the ball so low and hard. I kind of used to hit the way he did. This is why I remember it. I was never a home run hitter. I used to choke up, and I used to hit hard line drives. He hit a line drive that made it into the water, but the camera didn't have time to catch up to it. It was boom out, the, and they were like, that fuck? was a home run. Yeah. That's how hard he used to turn on the ball. Yeah. And it was a combination of how tight they were on the ball or of whatever. Course. They didn't need to do that with yeah. the guys then. This is what it is. You have to still hit the ball. Yeah, all right? You have to still hit the ball square. You have to still turn on. The mechanics have to be there. Steroids do add that little bit of oomph to it. There is no doubt. But you still have to be able to. Does it make the player? He's done some podcasts, Barry, recently. That, and I'm just trying to hear about his training. Like, I don't really give a fuck about I want to know what, what you were doing, your work ethic, your routine. And one thing that blew my mind about him, they were like, hey, there'd be games where you would get one pitch, you'd hit a fucking home run. How'd you do that? And he was like, listen, I took batting practice. I knew <clears throat> I would only maybe get three pitches to hit the whole game. He would hit between innings. He would run into the clubhouse and go right to the batting cage and just hit between innings over and over. Really? So, so he wouldn't lose his time. And earlier in his career, when he was playing for the Pittsburgh Pirates, he, uh, this is... Think about how far strength conditioning, is, strength conditioning has come in our lifetimes. Early, early 90s, very different than now. You could, it's very tough to find a good gym. He would bring a Bowflex machine no on, the, on the road trips and lift weights in his hotel after the game. It didn't even exist. So he like, was just a imagine? next level dedicated guy. Yeah. That, and obviously great genetics, sought out the best experts and got the best possible results from doing the drugs. Uh, and him being a dick to the media, unfortunately, is what really made the whole thing get wound up and ultimately ran him out of the sport. People, people weren't dick to the media. We're not fucking yes, black. Yeah. Exactly. And you just look at it, though, like that's an example of how powerful these drugs are and the type of results you can get. And you look at him now, the guy's in great health. He lost all the weight. He's a blue belt in jujitsu now. He's like shredded. Okay. Really? I yeah. Didn't he's know like that. on his he rides. Does, he does long distance biking now. Like, that was a face for him. I'm going to be the best baseball player. It's over time to get healthy. But people, if they are thinking, you know, I remember watching like, what was it? Uh, the one that Mark Bell's brother made. Uh, what's, what's Mark Bell's brother name? Chris Bell? Chris Bell, yes. Chris Bell. Yeah. Bigger, stronger, faster. Uh-huh. And they had an interview with these, these kids drinking beer. Yeah, of course that's fucking cheating. You don't know shit about shit, motherfucker. Of course. Of course. Everybody takes steroids. Real athletes take steroids. They're all taking steroids, you know? Maybe to a certain point, maybe less of a problem than years ago, maybe. But like there are definitely guys using anabolics and find that loophole. And yes, training's better, recovery's better, whatever. But listen, it's a multi-billion dollar industry, bro. Of course. 100%. I don't and think- yo, honestly, dude, like I honestly, in my true opinion, I think you should be allowed to take a little TRT, 100 milligram dose for recovery. Yeah. So everyone can recover, play better. I don't see anything wrong with that at all. I think it's interesting in sports, what kind of fascinates me. So look at like Hollywood as an example. How much money they've invested in, say, like, uh, like the most recent Indiana Jones movie, which, I, which was horrible, but it really made me think about this. They have a whole action sequence earlier in the movie where they just CGI Harrison Ford's face on a younger guy. 
because Harrison Ford is an intellectual property that these studios have invested millions of dollars in yeah. over the course of, they would rather keep his corpse going than make someone new, <laughs> right? If you, really, yeah. if you really think about yeah. it. So from, it's the same thing in sports. It's almost like you, the owners on some level want players that are playing well into their 40s because the fans develop a relationship with these people. They become an intellectual property and they're, they're around in the game longer. They build this lore. And I think that the game does miss that. And I think the owners, they don't, they don't really want to catch these guys. It's this cat and mouse game where it's like, are we not offending the fans, but are we letting the guys go out there and do their job? It's it's very, very strange, man. It's very I don't strange. understand what's the offense to the fans, bro. I, I just this is where I don't To your point before though, where that where the where the elite one percent of the one percent right. in this That's case. Why. Right. And like because this is the way we think, but you and I this is what it is, right? You and I in our whole life are surrounded like by people in our circle. That's our world. That's right. We don't really know until like I do understand that though, because I brought that up. Yeah. But like, we, I become what's the word I'm looking for? Like, I just forget about it. That yeah. most people don't really fully understand. The other they thing, don't. Oh, this is a good point. When it comes to pro wrestling, is a little bit different, and I want to get back to that in a sec. But when yeah. it comes to, we'll say baseball as an example. People also think that doing steroids means that you're the only guy on steroids, right? So like, if you're in Major League Baseball, you've got this secret, and you're cheating because you're using gear and no one else is using gear. And they don't like, it's like, dude, everyone is taking drugs. Everyone. And whether it's amphetamines, which was famously abused in baseball for fucking decades. Keep because sharp, again, bro. 162 Fighter games. Fighter take amphetamines. Yeah, absolutely, okay, they should. All right, so of course everyone is on drugs. So to look at Barry or Mark McGuire, but dude, how many pitchers that no one, because it got, because it's, the stats are less impressive. Home runs look crazy. So check this out, not to cut you off. Years Please. ago in the 90s, one of my friends played, acquaintance, played <laughs> minor league baseball, AAA. Okay. And I had no, I really, it was before the whole Barry Bonds, Mark McGuire thing. And he told me, he's like, dude, you know, everyone on my team is taking steroids. They didn't look like it. I go, you fuckers, he goes, dude, the pitchers are the biggest users for the recovery. Of course. When you take steroids, you could pitch closer and you don't need as many days yeah. in between. They didn't look like fucking shit. They yeah. didn't. I was like, because I only knew back then, like steroids jacked. I didn't understand the sport. Yeah. I was young. Yeah. But they did it for the recovery, for their arm, and the performance. That's Dude, why. Imagine giving a pitcher a TRT dose with low dose Anavar and some type of GH analog to help with collagen synthesis. That's the key to having that second half of your season really being as good as the first. And if you look at the guys that set those home run records, what really is different is they did not fall off in the second half of the season. As opposed to guys the who marathon were marathon baseball, Pre precisely, not a sprint. precisely. It's so what many fucking you, games, dude. dude. If you're on the road, they don't even, forget the game isn't even that that hard on your body. It's the travel, the lack of sleep, being mm -hmm. on the road, not being used to eating the same meals, not in your routine. That drags you down. People don't understand yeah. that. That whole combination of the marathon by the the end of the season, bro, it starts to fucking break you down. That's half a year. Yeah, it's half a year. Yeah, it's not I know. Sixteen weeks. It's it's half a year. Yeah, to, to sustain that duration of of uh, level of talent that you have is very very difficult without any help. So to, to the point about professional wrestling, why do you think? Because this is like fascinates me. Like, why do they have to offer this up? Is that like? Do you think that managers are like? There's people are saying this about you. You got to get out in front of it. Is it is it pride? Because some sometimes it's you know how dude in powerlifting maybe it's different in bodybuilding but powerlifting everyone's lying down about their doses. Right? No, Bobby, I'm the same. Is that just, uh, a bench dose 600? Liars. I was just taking the TRT Bro, dose. the bigger the guy, too. I remember being in a gym years ago, and the guy's fucking huge yeah. and strong. I was like, yo, man. And, dude, you look like a moron lying to me. You lied to the girl. You're trying to <laughs> lie to him. Don't ever lie to me, bro. No, dude. Don't lie to me. Yeah. I'm like, dude, what the fuck? You For me to go out there with my way and go, yo, what are you taking right now? He grew. He's like, dude, I'm taking fucking 300 mg of sip. That's it. I'm like, shut up. Conversation's over. Yeah. Goodbye. Yeah. Fuck out of here, Yo, dude. tell me, bro. Like, yeah. I'm not going to frown upon it. Just be like, yo, make sure you do this and this. Don't do it for fucking 37 weeks. Yeah. But yeah. okay, cool. Thumbs up. Yeah. You know, you're fucking getting jacked and strong. Don't lie to me. Yeah. And so I just wonder, is, is it a, I, I think the pride factor also can't be diminished. Like, no, I, I don't really need the drugs to look like this, but in my head, I'm doing it because of the road schedule or because I don't have access to diet. Like, dude. John Cena, first of all, the guy looks like he has, and I don't mean this as an insult, some mild acromegaly. Like, he has huge bone structure, huge Someone brought drumline. that up, actually. You yeah. said that. What about the acromegaly? The front? I'll be honest with you. I don't know if that's from growth. Maybe yeah. he has. Oh, he's, I know, he's always looked Dude, I know yeah. guys actually, like, 
a guy I went to high school with, right? Yo, he's just abnormally big, yeah. right? Like, not like a huge but He was big, he was thick, he was fast, but he had he had no fight in him. Meaning, like, he wasn't aggressive. He was a total waste of fucking strength and size. <laughs> anyway, I met his parents, bro. His parents were a third of the size of him. I went, this doesn't make sense yeah, it's at like all. Just a genetic accident. So he told me, he goes, I have a growth on my pituitary. I secrete too much growth hormone. Yeah. Almost like a controlled acromagaly. Yeah. Yeah. I go, dude, I go, you should be 120 pounds, not two fucking 30 in high school. Yeah. He was huge. Yeah. But he had, he was like, he was like, what's that? Uh, he was like a bull, but with like the heart of a fucking pigeon. Yeah. He like had the spirit of 120 pound person, but he, but he's dude, walking around. I was like, you are a waste. Size. I wish I had your that's body. A fucking, that's the a NFL. fucking shame, dude. Yeah. I know. That's a shame. But I, I just want, because again, like why even talk about it is my, is really my question. Like, so there's just no need to thing, bring it up. Social media gets edited. They probably wedged him into that, and he's probably like, fuck, I got to answer this. Okay. He's okay. got a billion kids, literally probably a billion kids look yeah. up to him. He's got to lie, I understand that. Where if it was him in a closet, he'd be like, dude, of course I fucking took yeah. Sustan on. Yeah, exactly. Because he, even though he's in the large eye, he's in our little circle yeah. still. But and just fucking famous. If you think about that early 2000s era of WWE, that was... After the heat on Vince McMahon from the federal case died down, so all the guys were jacked, and he was in the ring with guys like Chris Masters, who were obviously had fucking gyno. They were enormous and not getting shown up at all, right? Like you were in there, step for step, physique wise, dude. Of course you're on shit, dude. So it's check just this so out. Frustrating, man. So I went to a show maybe last year with my son. It was show was dope. It was awesome, but like the guys look like regular guys, right? My son loves wrestling. So last night we're combing through thing. It's on Peacock or whatever. And wrestling all stars comes up and it was Legion of Doom. I forgot what to go. Dude. Dude. Yeah, those guys had that sustan on 80s. They were fucking huge, bro. That was like cheeseburgers. I was like, dude, there was definitely both. These guys were jacked. Yeah. Huge. They don't look like that anymore, huh? No. I don't watch it anymore. So dude, I, yeah. no, they look almost reg like normal people ish a lot. Most of them. There's some jack guys. Don't yeah. get me wrong. You could clearly see some of these guys are taking steroids, uh -huh. right? But like the, the most of the guys back then, you know that eighties yes, fucking the, the, yo, the, these the, guys the, were jack. Test Deca D ball. That's exactly like, what the Legion yeah, doing. But there yeah. was accents. Smash the British Bulldogs look like that. Dude, you could find video of those guys lifting serious fucking strong, weight. bro. Serious, serious like weight. benching six hundred pounds, mm -hmm. like. And you think, I think about I again, saw that one. like you're on the road, you're not doing and like you're if you took animal an uh, no, animal who's the shorter stocky one and you had because his son played professional football. Yes. If you had that guy trying for a powerlifting meet. Yeah. Okay. And you trained him for two years, he would break records that would fucking. Well, this is never a guy who drinks. Touched. Yeah. He's on yeah. the road <laughs> and he's getting on the bar just bench pressing, bench pressing six hundred yeah. pounds. That's not what even proper training. Yeah. No, yeah. that's why I asked Matt Somer. I go, I used to rep 405 for like 12 to 15 consistently. I'm like, I didn't even know how to, I just did it once a week. That's what yeah. I worked up to. And that was my yeah. thing. He goes, I go, what do you think I could have scored? He goes, it was probably like six, mm -hmm. six and change. I go, really? That much? He goes, if you train that way. Yeah. So now you take a guy who benches like that. Dude. Yeah. <laughs> he's, he's breaking world records, dude. Yeah. At that point. You know, it's, 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 it's unbelievable. But yeah, I mean, I, I just, I wish we could be more honest about this. But to your point, we're in our bubble, little kids. And then I, I do think about this a lot. If you tell people that you're taking gear, okay? Like, I remember Christian Boving. He was the of fitness. Course. Yeah, okay, yeah. Famous fit, fitness. Like, he the was, guy. I think he was open about so it. Because I was using steroids since I was 16. bigger, faster, stronger. He got fired <laughs> because he was doing That's the That's where I caught it. Yeah. yeah. He, and and he, they asked him, do you take steroids? And he was like, obviously. And, uh, and he's like, I totally take hydroxycut too, but I take steroids. And then he literally said, you should know better than that to think that i'm not on steroids and he, he got fired by muscle tech or iowa Vate, whatever the parent company was and he got picked up by someone else obviously. i specifically remember him saying though yeah. and i remember this he admitted to how young he was when he started using yeah. steroids it was That's in right. his teens yeah straight through and yeah. he looked fucking retarded yeah. the guy he was insane. incredible physique and yeah. in, in that in that documentary he was probably in his 30s yeah that means he's using steroids most of his life Two decades and admitted it yeah. yeah you know at that point but, so, but the point is do you think just I, I go back and forth with this like all right, if The Rock admits I take 250 milligrams of test a week, and then I'm going to be honest, you know, when, I, when I'm peaking for a movie or for WrestleMania, I add in uh, 40 milligrams of Anovar a day. But that's and, exactly what he does. Yeah, but like we said, bro, yeah. the masses would not accept it because they don't understand. But do you think people would be start taking, do you think more people would take drugs irresponsibly if The Rock said that than otherwise? That's my yeah. question for you. Okay. Yes. Okay. Because he's yeah. a brand. He's not just the person in the movies. Okay. You know, and social media fucks kids' minds up with steroids. So 
they yeah. show this like these guys fucking not admitting to taking service they're showing him eating in certain ways what it, the, what i'm saying is this it's such a bad influence on a young individual's mind to start taking steroids mm -hmm. you know at such a young age where it's not meant to be in kids kids bodies mm -hmm. you see these guys on fucking social media with the chicks flexing yeah. and you know you know they were driven to look like that at such a young age we didn't have that shit yeah. or that kind of push on us also back when we were like young dude there was not that many mid-sized type of models so like i can remember opening up muscle and fitness yeah i would see christian boving right but usually it was fucking jay cutler and not everybody wants to look, look like change. Jay Cutler. Yeah, you know what I mean? Because now there's 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 a whole scale that goes yeah, but that scale all down, the way up and all the way down. That scale down is still big, those guys. Oh, of course. They're huge. And that scale down still uses a considerable oh, amount of drugs. Absolutely, absolutely. I just, so it's funny. You're like the biggest platform I've ever been on for, in, in the fitness realm at least. And I spent, I have not really, like you know, Zane gets mad at me over this, like, I was always thinking about just promoting my own gym or something. I was never really looking at what goes on in the fitness industry. So when I was getting tagged in some of your videos and I'm seeing the comments, I really started to realize like how much people's minds have been broken by this stuff. Because people are looking at me like, this guy doesn't even look like he works out. And I'm like, I don't think that people know what a non-steroided up body even fucking looks like anymore. Because your relationship with the, with the, with the physique is just what level of gear are you using? Is it like the Brad Pitt, a uh, mildly geared up for Troy, which is he's I was taking about gear? to say that, right, that's right. fucking crazy. Or is, it, or is it all the way up to, you know, Sam Sulik, right? Like everyone here is using, like we almost don't even know what an ideal, healthy male body looks like. And I'm guilty of that too. Like I'll look in the mirror and be like, ah, oh, man, I look like shit. And my wife's like, your fucking brain is broken from working in this how, industry. Do you know how my brain is totally destroyed and broken yeah. too? So, you know, body dysmorphia, right? Body dysmorphia. I'm going on vacation with my family. I'm trying to get ripped. I'm like, oh, man, I'm not as ripped. Do you know what walks around at these resorts, bro? <laughs> I yeah, I know. I know. Dude, yo, I'm not even saying be Joe Fitness. Yeah. I'm just saying, yo, just be normal, yeah. dude. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. pretty fucking bad, bro. Like, I, really bad. My wife and I took our honeymoon to Costa Rica back in, like, 2018. And I got, I tore my groin uh, jiu-jitsu class before oh, our wedding so like I, terrible it was, it sucked and it you gotta sucked. go to your wedding with a fucking your honeymoon with a torn groin yeah it was it was <sighs> rough but we, we got through it we persevered all right that sucks but i was like you know i wanted to look good on the beach and we were there for two weeks and i remember feeling the same way i'm like man i'm a little self-conscious like i'm not in the best shape and then i get down there and i'm like what the fuck is wrong with with the with the west like what is wrong with these people like i felt like there was like one other guy it was an all-inclusive resort that like looked like he lifted and he and i were training together every single day in the hotel gym and we're like dude what the like i cannot i mean again, i'm a little crazy bro like i think i gotta look like sergey constance if you know who that is like i want <laughs> to feel fucking, that way though you know what I, I almost did yeah. and i was wearing little ass shorts i looked you know people looking at me i was literally like an alien that got planted on the fucking i believe it on the resort absolutely i'm not saying you have to look like me i'm fucking crazy yeah you know i'm my brand i have to represent the fucking older guy who looks like that you uh -huh. know what i'm saying but the point of why i also look like that is because it can be done yeah, you know, and yeah, I take TRT, and all the guys, most of the guys I train, are take TRT. A lot of them, of course, dude. You know that what I'm saying? So, don't tell me I'm taking a boatload of drugs while I rip. No, it's fucking training and consistency over time, and all that other bullshit. Let me ask you this: because I've been experiencing this problem myself in my later later years. I mean, I'm 37, but whatever. <laughs> like, uh, how much more sensitive are you to drug side effects? now oh my god bro we just i was just saying yeah, that before i'm just curious tenfold like, and yeah. i'll speak openly about it yeah. right now i haven't taken d bowl since literally the 90s right okay. and i used to fucking take deep dude i remember at one point when i did a cycle i'll, I'll totally open medicine without any drug knowledge i was taking omnidrin remember omnidrin right. just, the, just the water the water below it's machine. like the polish sustenance yeah. you guys don't know and i was taking two weeks bro my my and my head showed it it mm -hmm. wouldn't even fit on a fucking phone screen mm -hmm. right it was like this i was huge and i was taking these russian pop out d balls remember those yep. blister packs yes, do you know how many of those i was taking a day bro five 15 get the fuck out of here dude and i felt totally fine i was taking 15 a day a strong huge eating cheeseburgers macaroni i was jacked Dude, later years now, I don't know what the fuck I was thinking. I go, hmm, D-ball, that's a good idea. I haven't taken it in fucking two decades. I took one pill for a fucking, I think it was a 25, maybe a 50 milligram pill for 
a week, bro. I got three nosebleeds in a week. I was getting headaches and my tongue exploded because my liver was going to fucking tell me stop. Yes, the human body gets way more sensitive as you get older. Yeah. 100%. I, I told you when I got my wife pregnant and I was like, you know what? I, I hated, my body really went to shit. My test, my, we were saying it was 110 nanograms per deciliter. I was in rough fucking shape. So I got TRT and I found a bottle of Primabolin and I took 100 milligrams of it a week. And the, the effect, I mean, first of all, the shit works. But my God, like my libido, because it's a, it's, a, it's a DHT, a derivative drug, derivative. was absolutely out of control. My wife was like, this is great, but like there's not enough hours in the day for us to, you know, to handle this. And I got thinking, last time I was here, we were talking about crazy cycles we've taken. And I'm like, there was a period of time where I took test, trend, and fucking halo testing. That's insane, bro. It's so insane. And I don't remember, maybe because I was only around crazy people, but like I was almost less sensitive to that in terms of like the libido, it was unbelievable. So to your point, yeah, I mean. I think that's why I was crazy. It was the halo. Yeah. It wasn't, the, maybe it was the diet too, but probably the halo. Makes you insane. Because was, I was totally insane. Yeah. I lost, so like everybody gets a different kind of crazy, yeah. right? So I remember when I was training for a show, I was taking halitestin, and I lost that filter where like you would hold back to say something. So someone, I swear to God, brother, this is the exact story. I was doing cardio and at the gym I was going through, you had to sign up for your half hour. Mm -hmm. And I signed up for four half hours in a row because I would do two hours of cardio. Mm -hmm. The owner comes over, he's like, yo man, people are complaining. I go, she's gonna go home and fucking eat a bagel and then follow up with the cheesecake. I'm gonna go home and eat a piece of chicken and fucking oatmeal. I go, fuck off, I'm staying on it. He's like, bro. Please, you're killing I me. lost that instead of just getting off. Nah. Or like someone wanted to work on a hamstring thing. I'm like, you're fucking fat and you're gonna stay fat. Get away from me. I swear, I remember yeah. that. I was like, yeah. yo, what happened to my brain? So it wasn't the diet, it was probably the halo test. Of course, it makes you totally, <laughs> it makes you totally insane. Yeah. Totally insane. But as you get older and you have more to lose, that's that's the thing that concerns me too. Like, not that I would take those types of doses or drugs again, but it's like, what the fuck would I say to my kid? You know what I mean? You, you know what I mean? Like to like my, my three year old girl. Like I don't want to be snapping on I her. I took trend two times. No, usually one to two times in my life, right? And it was the most side effecty drug I ever taken. Uh, it fucking that's ninety percent of the reason why I'm bald, right? Mm -hmm. uh, ninety percent of the reason why I shut off my my endocrine system mm -hmm. definitively, right? 100%. My balls were non existent after. Thank God I brought them back, but and I would never take it again. I entertained the thought here and there just to change. I'm like. I'm afraid of what, how I would react when I get mad. That was more, I was more afraid of, of that than the fucking physical side effects. Me too. It makes you completely fucking crazy. That's yeah. the only compound yeah. that I legitimately, Halo compared to Trent to me, right? What I did, cause I looked at, yo, I, it was different. Halo was just like, I think I just lost my filter and maybe I was dieting, I was weak, I don't know. Mm -hmm. Trent made me fucking insane. It makes bro. you a deranged person. Deranged, yeah. Bro. It's like 100%. It, it, everything. But see, this, this is the one thing that I tell young guys, guys that I know through jujitsu, because jujitsu, there's no drug testing. It's, it's, it's literally Wild West level stuff. Everyone's taking shit. And guys will want to take gear. If they want to compete, I totally understand. And I tell them, like, to me, you really got to be the most aware of the psychological side effects. Because as a young guy, you're not thinking about how you're going to feel in 15 years. You're not thinking about your fucking HDL. And realistically, mm -hmm. you're going to power through it. You're probably going to feel fine. And I, it was so funny for me to look again. I've made the huge mistake, Vin, looking at the comments of one of the one of the clips that that Zayn posted, where guys are like, "You're just a pussy and you're mentally weak." And I'm like, "Dude, I don't think you know how fucking crazy this shit. Is. You are a crazy person. Like, you when you are on trend, it's like looking really any hormone problem is like this. This is how I felt when I had the low test. It's like looking through a stained glass window. It could be the nicest day ever, but the window is black." you can't enjoy the sun, right? There's just this filter that happens that, that that's what your endocrine system does to your brain for me. It's just like, it's the best day ever, but I'm on tread. I'm looking for a reason to fucking get angry at someone and flip the fuck out. To comment on that individual's comment saying you're a pussy, yeah. this and that. Now, I remember when I used trend, I took two different brands of underground trend. Mm -hmm. The disparity in strength was drastic. Yeah. Who knows what kind of trend he's getting? Maybe he's getting trend True. quarter, what's supposed to be in there. True. I had trend that was blood red yeah all right that was the trend that i got and yeah. then i had the lighter one yeah. which i'm like yo this is not the same i went back to the other one i'm like okay this is trend yeah you felt you felt the big difference maybe he's there. taking trend that looks like light watered down peach juice like cut with master on or something too where it's like right. less, less aggressive yeah but it's just funny because i don't think enough guys understand this and i and i just like 
I love training. I love helping guys with this type of stuff. But it's like there's more to life than just lifting the heaviest weight all the fucking time. And you need to be careful of the the culture you're cultivating around you because of all this crazy shit you're putting in your body. Like I am sure that I was absolutely un fucking bearable to be around. I'm sure. I'm sure. The real reason why I stopped doing it was I. I've known my wife since 1997. We went to middle school together. Any girl that I was dating when I was on that shit, when you just fucking meet someone, right, and you're dating them, you're looking for reasons to write them off. Oh, that's a that's a red flag. That's she's crazy. You know, that's how I was, especially if it was interfering with my training. When I was taking trend back then, and I knew that I knew who my wife was. I've known her family for you know 20 years or more at that point in time. Like. Oh, this is this drug is creating a problem. Like I'm not going to be able to keep this relationship together because I'm like inventing reasons to be mad at this person who I know is as sane as a woman could possibly be. And that's the real reason why I got off it. And I just think I see a lot of guys that are on drugs making horrendous mistakes with women. There's a study I'll, I'll send you. You told, you told me that last there's a, time. There's a study. You guys would do shit that will like, yeah. Yeah, I don't even know who you are. There's literally a study on psychopathy and anabolic steroid users. And uh, literally 97.5%, I think, in the study of guys that were tested reported the number one side effect was poor sexual decisions. With Trembolone. Yeah. Or other anabolics as well, in particular DHT derived. Obviously, Trend's a weird animal because it's a, it's, a, it's a 19 nor, but it ha- it's very androgenic. It's, the str- it's a very strange kind of jack-of-all-trades, bizarre drug. Trembolone is, yeah, yes, I know. Yes, yes. It's a, it's know, a it's fascinating a, yeah. drug if you really think about it. It's an adrenaline-based, but fucking so androgenic. Yeah. I know it's, it's a, crazy. It's a very unique compound. But it's been studied in a controlled environment that the worst side effect was poor sexual decisions. Like... Guys, you might, gay. You might, yeah, <laughs> I, I think there's some truth to that, though, dude. That's crazy. Guys it develop pornography individual. addictions. Some guys, I go, they go, Joe just ramps my sex drive into the fucking insane stratosphere. Yeah. So talking about compounds, right, that I'm a little bit older. And listen, I still dabble here and there, but only with one compound because my body metabolizes well is Masteron, right? Just analog. Okay. So like I started doing it, I go for blood work now because I'm fucking very on top of it and I care about living to a certain extent. Of you course, know what I mean? your kids now. And uh it doesn't offset my blood too much, or even really? if any. Yeah, it doesn't. Really? The only thing that starts to get funny at a certain amount of weeks, at a low dose, you know, maybe because I'm a little bit older, I start to feel my prostate get a little funny. That's when I stop. It's like usually at like week 10 at 200 okay. milligrams. But now, and I'm talking totally open. I do it when I go away on vacations, right? I do it and I have another vacation back to back. So I'm like, what am I going to do? Come off for three weeks? Let me just lower the dose down to 100. I never did 100. 100 like, who does 100? It's like water. But yeah, but what it's doing is it's my body composition is changing and it's not doing it having any side effects. So you felt like it was an, so it was the smart choice to take 100. I think I might only do 100 moving yeah. forward. I don't even need 200, but I could do it for a little bit longer. It's almost logical. You could put the drug in your body for a little bit longer. Yeah. Our mindset, a little older, doing it, caring about other things yeah. and do it for a little bit longer because my desired effect is more my body composition than being jacked and fucking, you know, I still feel good enough. I'm not 26 or 25 looking to be the fucking monster walk around. I don't care, but yeah. I just want to look, look good lean, enough, look, look yeah, lean. Course, and it's yeah. doing just enough and it's not fucking giving me any side effects. So it doesn't fuck little, with your bloods at all? Like you feel pretty, dude, feel pretty my good? my body, let's put it this way. I went at week 10 taking 200 milligrams of Masteron a week. My lipid profile, my HDLs dropped one point. Wow. One point. So it didn't do anything. That could have been just the day. You know what I'm saying? It could have been huh. two points higher. Yeah. You know how that fluctuates a little how did, bit. How did it, how'd you feel mentally? I mean, it's going to boost your libido, obviously. But it did. Yeah. It did. I felt actually great. Good. See, see those DHE derivatives like that could add it. I felt good on that. Did you know, were you running this concurrently with TRT? Or yes. You, okay, okay. So you're, yes. you're taking about 200 tests per I se. always have to take okay. tests. Okay. Interesting. My body is a very testosterone dependent by i need to do it i'm saying i shut off bed and my body to initiate any testosterone even with high dose of hcg it's it's minimal yeah because i smoked my other system i'm the same way dude i was nuking myself with hcg and it was like like, to the point where i was getting morning sickness like i was getting physically nauseous from the the levels of hcg like just to be able to knock my wife up and i was like this has this has to end like you got to get i cannot keep doing this just totally killing me dude totally fucking killing me Absolutely. Yeah, I was doing tons of it. And I thought like when I went to the doctor that I told you go to, um, I thought my test, because I actually did feel fine. Mm-hmm. I felt good. I felt good in the gym. My sex drive wasn't there. Mm-hmm. You know, everything downstairs blew up. But my test only went up to like 260 so, nanograms. So I'm like, bad. oh my God, I was hoping to get like 500, yeah. 550. Yeah. My endocrine system was like, 
Yeah. She was like barely working. That's why I tell, I have some clients that are guys like in their, in their forties and fifties. And I just tell them like, dude, you got to get blood work done because you, you have no idea how shitty you feel until you fix the problem. Right? Like when I came here, my levels were in the tank. I knew on some level I did not feel well for yeah. sure. Okay. But again, you get so used to living with that that it just becomes, okay, I'll have a little more caffeine here or, oh, you know, I'll reduce my training volume a little bit here or I'll take some carbs I out. I can't believe I'm not you're walking around one song. Dude, when I saw that, I, <laughs> on one hand, I wanted to cry because I was like, what the then, fuck? Then all of a sudden, yeah. you start getting depressed and I, even but, more tired. But, but then I was like, I'm actually proud of myself that I, was, that I was able to get the fuck out of bed and go about my, my business. But when I showed it to my wife, I was like, listen, just please understand that when I'm fucking complaining, like this is what's going on. And like the number should be like 800. And that's still like, I would like it to be higher clearly, but like this is, this is fucking killing me. Like this is a medication that I absolutely need to be a productive person. To talk about that, right? Well, I'm, I don't know if I spoke about this last time, but what people don't also realize is what testosterone does other than all the physical benefits and what the mental benefits of it. Mm -hmm. So I know guys, actually a very close friend of mine who I would train, I'm a very close friend of mine now. And he was fine for years. He's in his 50s. And he goes, dude, I don't know what's wrong with me for the past month, bro. I can't get up. But depression kicked in. Yeah. Right? He goes, the doctor put me on whatever SSRI or whatever that is. He's like, and I fucking feel worse. I go, dude, you don't, all you need is testosterone. Mm -hmm. And how I learned this, it was educated on me from, a, uh, he was my con old concierge doctor. He was the best doctor ever, bro. Unfortunately, someone was doctor shopping. You know what doctor shopping yep. is? You're a smart guy. Yeah. And he was caught up in that loop and he was real cool and the guy died from a pill overdose, right? Oh, he was a maniac, right, doc? But he was the best doctor ever, bro. He identified oh. people. I sent their sicknesses, Lyme disease, no one could ever figure out. Mm -hmm. He was like a Doogie Hauser. Graduated yeah. college early. But anyway, he's like, you know, because depression runs deep in my family. I was talking about my father. He goes, this is why I picked it up. He goes, he doesn't need those drugs. He just needs tests. Mm -hmm. What it does, it elevates these chemicals naturally in your brain. Of course, Guess yeah. what happened? He went on TRT, no depression meds. Because all these chemicals got naturally elevated through force through a fucking SSRI. Do you know how SSRIs even work? A reuptake inhibitor? Wow, I might know something he doesn't. Tell this me. is fucking first time. So I learned this from one of my friends who was a drug addict. How cocaine works, what it does, it's the dopamine trap. Mm -hmm. Think of the word, reuptake, inhibit. Mm -hmm. It doesn't flow through the channel and recycle. It blocks the channel and lets it overflow with dopamine. SSRI does the same thing with serotonin. Oh, okay, okay. It's a reuptake, inhibit. Yeah. Tra that makes traps perfect it. sense. Yeah. So like it's overloaded, and that's why these drugs work for the serotonin fucking overload. Yeah. But you could fix the problem, rectify the problem with just testosterone, and you don't need these drugs. I mean, you think about it, the industry would love to have you taking... Uh, you know, blood pressure medication or cholesterol medication from having, because people don't realize your blood work can be fucked up from having test levels that are too low also. Like this this does occur. They'd love to have you on depression medication and something for your dick. You saw prescription right? thugs? That was another one he made. Very disturbing. Uh, very disturbing. They meant, yo, if they yeah. healed everyone, there would be no money. Yeah. They meant to just float you. Dude, my, my grandmother was an early victim of this type of bullshit. She had rheumatoid arthritis uh, and had a hip replacement and this is like back in the, you know, the 80s. When back then you got hip replacement, you were fucking done. Now you get one and like, you could, you could literally, yeah, you could, yeah, you're literally throwing roundhouse kicks <laughs> in three know, weeks. Um, she hid from us a absolutely insanely crippling opioid addiction forever because she had a doctor that was giving her, dude, just, I mean, jugs. Like when she passed away, she was in the hospital. She died because the hospital actually overdosed her on her rheumatoid arthritis meds and killed her. No way, bro. H horrible. <laughs> Fucking horrible, dude. They, they, they just, she was on a very low dose of methyltrexate, mm -hmm. which is something they give people with, with cancer, okay? Uh, and it was such a low dose that the, the nurse thought, I guess this is not the right, and he just moved the decimal point over, done. She That's died. what happened, bro? Yep, Medi med medically induced coma, and then she never woke up. See you later. And you know, just to maybe finish my rant here, we went to sue the hospital, and they, they kind of... Uh, discovered that because of her age and her physical condition, her life wasn't worth money, basically. You know, you know what I mean? So and, they got out of it because of her age. Yeah, it's totally so insane. they act, made a mistake. Yeah. And they got away with it because she was old. Very upsetting. And she, when she, after she died, she was living in the apartment upstairs from my family's house. My mother was like in tears. She's finding bottles of Vicodin. Oh, fucking! It didn't I mean, come out when she was. We knew alive. that she. We knew that she would, would take it. Okay, she wasn't hiding it, but I guess again, you don't think like back then. That she she passed away in two thousand eight. 
let's say she started taking these drugs in the late 90s. I'm just spitballing. Yeah. Here, okay. People didn't know, I think, the, the extent to which these pills fucked your life up back then, dude. And so no one in my family was thinking, wow, grandma's fucking high all day because you don't see her all the time. And when you do, she's always acting the same. And she didn't have the stuff laying around. And I'm like telling my mother, I'm like, not that I would ever do this, but like, do you understand how much we could sell this shit for? <laughs> like, do you have any idea? You found pills yeah, and I'm, pills. I'm, dude, jugs You know what's it. the crazy thing? So I, I ran to a friend at a kid's party and he used to have a bad pill problem. And, uh, and he's totally open about what he says. He goes, bro, he goes, two times a day I set my time. He goes, I would wake up and he goes, I would take 10 Oxy 80s at one time. Ugh. Then in the afternoon, take another 10, bro. He goes, I was spending like two grand a week. On the pills. Stack. Yeah. Dude, he goes 10 and 10, 10 and 10. He goes, timed. I go 10 at one time, bro. That's fucking crazy. I go, dude, I go, I'm so glad I tried Percocet only one time. It's because I had to, because my when I tore my tricep uh -huh. and I knew right then it wasn't for me. And he goes, Oh, you see, for you, I got like real dopey. I don't like that. Now, you know, I used to play around shit when I was on party and stuff. Uh -huh. I like being up. My fucking, I go, my tricep was killing me, bro. And I was like, I still, I'm not taking. I was afraid yeah. of him because I knew people got addicted to so him. Yeah. What if I did like him? I took a five. I'm like, oh, this fucking motherfucker ain't doing shit. I yeah. took two. I took three. I'm like, oh, all right. Now the pain's away. And I'm like, I feel kind of good walking around my house. I'm like, oh, I kind of like this. I'm like, fuck, I kind of like it. I didn't. Sh I needed a shower sleeve, right? It was the middle of the day. I'll always remember. It was sunny out. I go, I have to drive a storm out. Fucking, I got in my car, bro. I was like, I don't even know if I could drive, bro. I barely, I walked to my car like this. If I, w when I got out of the car, I go, yo, a 12 year old could knock me out and rape me and rob me. I really? Couldn't, I felt, that fucked up. I, dude, I couldn't move. I go, I don't like these. This ain't for me. Yeah. I was telling him that story. He goes, you see, for me, it revved me up. It's interesting. I yeah. had the same experience with Oxy, actually. I, uh, I had a surgery on my right arm, had a steel plate put in there back in 08, actually. And uh, I remember the nurses telling me, listen, the second you get home, you take one of these pills because when the local anesthetic wears off, you're going to be in a lot of fucking pain. And I'm like, it's an arm. It's not my back. It's not my, what the fuck are you talking about? So I went right away to get food because <laughs> you don't eat for like a day before surgery. And I got a full whole wheat grandma pizza from King Umberto. I ate the whole fucking thing. I went home and I sat down. I started watching 300. I'm laying about my arm in a sling. And once the anesthetic wore off, dude, it felt like there was someone in my arm with a fucking jackhammer. And I'm like, this is miserable. miserable. So again, I started, I started popping the pills. And of course, there's so much shit in my stomach. It's taking forever to kick in. But I was terrified, just like you were, to take them. Thank God I hated it. You didn't like it either. I fucking hated it, dude. Like, I, I couldn't sleep. It, it, like, I was all constipated and fucked up. Like, yeah. it, it ruined my gut. And again, like, I'm reasonably in touch with my body. I know if I eat this, I'm not going to be bound up. I mean, right. let's just be honest. We pay attention to these things. And I, I, the second it was done, I just dumped that shit all down the drain. And I'm like, fuck this, dude. I don't want anything to do with it. But thank God, right? Because yes, God forbid God. you pop that. Now you're getting How many guys heroin. like it? Oh, too many. You know what I mean? So, like, that dopey feeling I don't like. So, I've actually gave valiant effort many times to try to like smoking weed. I, I tried. It. I, it. I tried so many uh, times. I was like I was like I'm not a quitter. I'm going to I'm going to yeah. like weed. I fucking hated it yeah. every single time. You and time. I are very similar. My yeah, I don't like that, bro. I don't like feeling down, vulnerable, whatever. I was like, eh, you know, but uh I remember when I did construction. It's funny cuz I didn't know really anything about this then. And it wasn't as the pill problem like in all that whole like epidemic came out later mm -hmm. when i first saw construction i was working with this guy he had cancer and he had morphine lollipops holy shit dude he would be sucking on these motherfuckers all day <laughs> right I, yeah that's like beyond and then why oh i'm saying that why i think about that i had a surgery right and dude i was in so much pain as soon as i opened my eyes i was like motherfucker was other than my tricep and fucking they gave me, they gave, actually, you know what? They gave me Percocet then too. It did nothing, yeah. right? They had shooting me with morphine. I'm uh -huh. like, oh. And you feel great for a little now bit. Now I yeah. feel pretty good. Yeah. I walked to my car floating and shit. That was the only time I was ever putting yeah. my body just to get into my car yeah. with a fucking wheelchair, yeah. you know? I, got, I have a question for you about bodybuilding because you're the only person, frankly, that I know whose opinion I would respect <laughs> more than my own that I talk to on these things. Obviously, you look at any sport. And the previous generation is always shitting on the current generation. That's yeah. just that's always a, that's always a thing. But I do think there's a point in time where things in society, no matter what it is, do objectively get worse, right? Like people, things do die. Civilizations, people, like there's a point where things do get. It just is what it is. Okay. 
do you think that bodybuilding from a presentation perspective, not again, not from a <clears throat> money perspective or anything else, do you think it peaked in the 90s and the early 2000s? Do you think, or is it sour grapes for someone like, say, Dorian Yates or Sean Ray to be like, these motherfuckers couldn't hang in my generation? No, I think bodybuilding now is bigger than ever. Okay. It's because due to the fact I think it, it catapulted in the more positive direction, it got away from that mass monster look because it's just not a good look. It's not yeah. eye appealing. Yeah. The more appealing look is that classic physique look of okay. this guy, well, Chris Bumstead, and the, the guy one. who comes in second is this, I don't even know his name, but I don't know any, I don't really follow too much, uh -huh. but the look I do know is definitely more aesthetically pleasing. Yeah. I always use this analogy, is that the guy with guys are like, yo, that motherfucker's jacket looks good, looks good in clothes, and the girls go, I want to bang him. Yeah. It's that cross. That's true. Versus like a Nick still, Walker who's just like so big. It's like, dude, dude what the fuck are we even doing? So here, that man? also, what I was going to say is that's what you call a super responder. All right. Nick Walker. Mm -hmm. He touches a bottle test and just grows muscle. Yeah. Just like Derek wants her. And yes, they're taking more, the higher dose. But yo, those classic guys take drugs. Yeah, of course. They're not taking one sustenon. They're still taking like a gramma test and a yeah. plethora of shit and growth hormone and all that other stuff. Their bodies develop differently. They don't get the distended good. Maybe they're not using growth some because it gives you that distended growth. Or maybe insulin too. They're probably not using insulin. Insulin makes you, gives you yeah. that, that look. What people yeah. don't also know is that insulin is the most anabolic hormone in your body. You obviously know yes, that, right? And what, what's crazy is I remember my buddy lived in California, <clears throat> moved here from, from Jersey, lived there for years. He was the guy with the pros, right? And he became friends with this guy. Uh, I'm not going to mention a name, but they called him. He was gay, and he was fucking a 330-pound bodybuilder, right? Okay. He was an heir to a fucking condiment company. Okay. And they hung out. The guy was loaded. He goes, bro, every meal he would shoot 80, in, 80 units of insulin. <clears throat> any steak chicken bro, bro he was fucking huge but think about it. you shoot 80 units of insulin i don't know if bodybuilders are doing that to that extent maybe they are yeah. maybe they do shoot a little, a little insulin with every meal i don't know but that is what makes them that fucking astronomical size there was a, a pod I, I think i think it was jay cutler but i don't think it was his podcast it might have been on who is the guy that does uh he was a pro back in the day he does a lot of coaching now i'm uh, forgetting his name but uh european guy Milo Sarkis. Yes, yes. Okay, they were talking about the, the, the most out of control gear use in the '90s, and they were saying that uh, Nasser used to shoot 750 megs of test a day. Do you remember how big he was, bro? Fucking retarded, dude. Yeah, just the lats, quads, all year long. 750 a fucking That's day. Died of a heart attack. Very, died. very young. Very, very, very young. young. But people also don't realize it's not just also. It drops your HDLs to zero, mm -hmm. but fucking when you take an overabundance of steroids, steroids themselves initiate LDL elevation from your liver as well. Mm -hmm. So the more LDL you're going to create into your blood, the more anabolics. The other thing, we spoke about this a little bit last time, but I, another thing that I think that people that want to get into this or guys that are in it don't understand the burnout is really just the, it's the food. Because another thing I'm noticing, you know, maybe too much information here, but whatever, we're just divulging everything on the, on yeah, the Vinny Uzi podcast. So when I got back on test, I'm like, I want to put some, some weight back on because my body had shrunk. I was looking skinny fat for my standards, and I'm like, I fucking hate how I look. So I upped my calories, and I'm going back to some of my old tricks to get some extra calories in. And I noticed, like, I just could not tolerate the same quantities of the food that I used to eat. So as an example, used to be a big oatmeal enjoyer. I mean, there are retards that say, like, oatmeal is like peasant food, and it doesn't no, work. It's so fucking, fucking retarded. Kill yourself, okay? But... I remember I was I was making like an oatmeal super shake that I'd bring with me to to my gym to coach every night. It would be like a cup of oatmeal, a two tablespoons peanut butter, two tablespoons maple syrup, probably it's yeah, yeah it was so, so yeah it was and a couple scoops of pro, I mean you're talking about it, like a thousand calorie yeah. shake, something that back in the day, I mean even six seven years ago, would have crushed it no problem, dude. I would drink this thing, I'd feel great, I'd be full, have energy. My wife stopped sleeping in the same room as it me. It destroyed you. She was like. She's like, Eric, I'm coming into this to the room. Because she, my daughter, bed shares still to this day. She's three. So my wife will fall asleep in my daughter's room, then come in and come to bed with me. She's like, I popped the door. And it was like a, it was like a fucking gas chamber. Your body, she, just, <laughs> your body just cannot digest. She was just like, she's like, you need to know this because well, you're sleeping and like you don't bro, understand you know what, what you're happened? doing. You to probably should have did half of that. Yeah. Let your body yeah. get just. You went in all in and made funny. that same shape. I, I actually cut. I still, I still reduced it. I used to do a cup and a half to two cups of oats. So in my mind, I'm like, oh, we're starting off just fine here. Dude, she was like, you need to know this because God forbid you drink this earlier and you go to work and you're going to be around your clients. Bro, or you're going to be doing jujitsu, farting in some dude's bro, face. I mean, come on, man. Your body just couldn't even handle yeah. it. Maybe, you know, like 
also this, you know, you, you, your metabolism changes when you yeah. take gear. Your body just soaks it up. Yeah. Your just body like probably just, like, just fucking took in everything and made it into... Tell you the truth, dude, I would, I would drink that thing while I was coaching clients and I'd like go to the bathroom and I'd look in the mirror and I would just see veins just starting to pop out. I'm Do you like, know who Tom shit. Haviland is? Do you follow him on Instagram? No, no. Okay, he's a huge country boy. He, well, he wears a long sleeve fucking like shirt. Never shows his face, shows his back. Wears Carhartt pants. The guy's huge. He's, oh, I think so, I know who he is. He just dumb, does these freak lifts. Like dumb, these incredible... strong, but yeah. so he was posting his like meals and one mm -hmm. of them was his pre-workout shake. It was like whole milk, dates, honey, yeah, oatmeal. Really funny, That's so what right. reminded me yeah, of it. I'm like, yeah. yo, that probably tastes fucking good. Yeah. I, tell, I got a very funny 1200 story. 1,200 calories. About guys that eat like free. Because obviously genetics are the ultimate determining factor. And then effort, of course, is very important yeah. as well. I had a friend who I used to train with. He was going to Hofstra and he was renting a house in Hempstead. So he got his housemates into Strongman. We met, I was working for GNC. We kind of connected. He was working there too. Like we all come over and train. So we had squat rack in his garage, glued ham raise, all the strongman implements. And this dude was into the scene. I mean, he was on the message board. This is pre-Twitter. He knew whoever, who was That's competing. So where. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And he was like, he would fly to Kentucky to compete and he's yeah. all over. And he told me he showed up to an event in, okay, we'll say Kentucky, somewhere in, you know, in the middle of the country. And he sent some guy that he had never seen before just showed up and just blew everyone the fuck out murdered every single person. They didn't person. know who he was. Had, had never heard of him before. They had no idea who he was. So my friend Vinny comes up to him and he's like, he's like, dude, like, who the fuck are you? And it's just some country boy is like, ah, you know, man, it's my first show. And he's like, how do you train? Like, what's your diet? He's like, it's like, shit, man, I'm a lumberjack. I work eight hours a day. I eat two pizzas a day. I lift two times a week. That's it. No way. And the guy's just fucking he's hauling lumber in the it, just in the woods and he all fucking blew day. Away he's everyone. doing like a reverse sled drag for eight, 10, 12 hours a day with hundreds he of was pounds. Crazy his, strong. He said his back was retarded. And all he would do was just practice the strongman implements because like he just needed the skill, you know, in the event. And he said he looked at him and he was he went home and he's like, I have to quit the sport. <laughs> it's like <laughs> Dude, that's, this is the that, that, what the that would fuck just take all the win out of your Be like, yo, there's yeah. people like that that exist. This guy's like, measuring his macros. He's got everything. He's calculating total this guy load. Who says he, he goes, I eat two pizzas a day. It's literally said, I eat two pizzas a day. I'm a lumberjack. No calculated lift. I, I just lift, lift I weights. I lift weights twice a week. Okay. And he just showed up. He probably was from the town. He's like, he probably saw the events. Like, I'll just these fucking this. pussies. Like, I'll just show up at the Dude, they show like country weekend. boy strength. You know, this is strong. Like, my grip is decently strong, but not like anything like yeah. that just strong for like my size yeah. nothing crazy this is strong the guy had a fucking 45 pound plate country boy never even lifted weight his belly was out there yeah. he fucking pinch gripped the 45 uh, and picked it yeah, up like that this. death grip shit dude i that's think it was either grip. 45 or 100 dude he went like this and picked it up i'm like holy fuck that's bro. the death grip dude that's no, that's, crazy that, that's but that's next level shit that's the those are the guys that are offensive linemen they're guys that just oh, yeah, middle bro. the country one like, other topic i wanted to cover hit me with it was it was on into the acting scene again, right? So okay. I don't know the guy's name, the guy, Jack Reacher, okay? Mm -hmm. He has great genetics. He looks good. He's a big dude, handsome, all that shit. And he admits he's on TRT. And someone in the gym was like, oh, he's got to be on a ton of shit. I said, no, he probably is only on TRT, but he's a super responder. Mm -hmm. What people don't know what something is, they automatically assume someone, he's got to be on a ton of drugs. Now, I'm not saying that the guys we said that were are, that, that are claimed the natural, or this, yeah. they're on drugs. But meaning a super responder, they take a smidge of something and the receptors soak it up like a motherfucker mm -hmm. and they get a response like something they're taking 1,200 mg of test. So I remember one time talking to Donnie Thompson about this. He's like a friend of my family, you know, he's been over at my house for Easter in the past and everything. And we were talking about drugs and he really kind of changed my perspective on what having good genetics means in particular for bodybuilding and strength sports. He was just basically saying like, Okay, you could have, for strength sports, you could have the big hands, the big wrists, the huge fucking elbows, the fast twitch fibers. But like, if you're not a super responder to these drugs, you might not, you might still win, but you're going to die way younger because you're going to be taking two or three times the doses. Like, ultimately, if I have to take 250 and I, get, and I look like you do when you're on 750, that's a decided performance advantage. And also for longevity and health, the effects longevity. are just, just immeasurable. There are a lot of guys that look great, but they just respond like shit to drugs. There's a couple guys, I'm not going to name names. This guy knows who they are. Uh, I train jujitsu with that are on gear. And I found out second or third hand that are on it. And I want to be like, you sure this shit's real? 
but it's pharmacy, pharmacy grade. They just, they just do not respond to the drugs. They just feel it just, bad for them. Yeah, no, seriously. I've seen like, that to people too. You want to look at it, you're like, dude, maybe find a new hobby. Like if I, if I was taking 250 a week of test and I did not see a noticeable increase within seven to 10 days before it even the esters peak and I'm at that peak blood value, time to move on, buddy. I've seen what guys the fuck like you that doing? and I'm like, damn, bro. Yeah. That's fucking terrible. And especially if it's from a pharmacy. Like, obviously, your story about trend, like, okay, I might get some underground shit that sucks, and then the next batch is really good or whatever. But, like, farmer grade test is farmer grade test. I remember saying to you last time when I got farmer grade test for the first time, with the exception of when I got it, you know, from overseas and I'm getting the, the, the Gillenica ampules, those were fucking incredible. But, like, I was taking, you know, order X amount, get the price down. I'm taking shit from Eastern Europe, whatever. Like, when I took 250 of farmer grade, it felt like 500 of whatever bathroom shit I was taking. And then you have that come to Jesus moment with yourself where you're like, okay, what the fuck was I putting in my body for all those years? Yeah. It scares the shit out of you, dude. You're like, I was a psycho. Re I'm kind of proud of how retarded I was because I wanted something so bad that I would risk everything anything. to get it. Anything. I, I would rather, I would not miss a workout, not miss a meal. Fuck you. I got to go train. I have to deadlift tonight. Get the fuck out of my way. By the same token, I'm like, what the fuck was I shooting in my quad? <laughs> dude, I, I remember I remember getting growth know, hormone. Man. Dude, you're not gonna talk forever. Yeah. I remember getting growth <laughs> hormone, right? When I was a kid. And dude, I might have told you a story, and it was a Russian kid, and we couldn't and we didn't know what it said. Uh -huh. Right. And I got it from my brother's friend, and fucking he was older than me, and he was taking these guys were huge, bro. Yeah. I remember like they were 18, they were fucking like 230 pounds, yeah. you know. And I remember, I didn't even know how to mix it. I was doing it. I didn't even yeah. know what I was dosing. And he, he had a guy who could fucking do the, translate the fucking insert. And was it cadaver? Goes, it was cadaver growth. Yeah, it's real scary shit, dude. I took yeah. one kit. These guys took tons of kits. Yeah, it could kill you, though. Yeah, it could kill you. Yeah. We, I told you, give you that fucking overnight, the human mad cow. That's, <clears throat> it's funny, man. I, I, in a way, I miss it being the Wild West. But then by the same token, like, there is an element of like, I'm glad that guys that are taking it now... Like it's almost like a weird economy. Like back in the day, there were scammers that popped up online that would sell you shitty gear, and then they would just shut their business down. Nowadays, it, the government isn't going after it like they were. Like I remember Operation Gear Grinder. Like post, remember that? Yeah, like, Holy they're, they're, shit! I, my friend oh, was. Do you want to hear a, a fucking insane story? Um, the powerhouse gym. I'm more of a. I'm like more of a Western Nassau Queens guy. That was kind of my running my stomping ground. The powerhouse gym in in in, in, in Queens. I know okay. that one. Yeah. 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 Bro, they raided this the thing gym. with fucking MP5s. SWAT. My friend was in there benching, and he's like, all of a sudden, a SWAT team comes in. They're coming in from both ends. The fucking blood, the riot shields. Like everyone's just doing curls. <laughs> but so somebody was selling shit out of the, which obviously the place was insane. Okay, somebody was selling shit out of out of out of the locker room. It was good quality shit. A friend of mine, like, uh, so was a. The guy that I used to work with at GNC, who was a, was a great friend of mine, freakish bench presser, freakish. He knew a guy at Valencia Gym in Elmont, Valencia. which was another yeah, crazy yeah. meathead gym. Yeah, <laughs> Still there. I said that he was training at that particular powerhouse gym. And about, I swear, this is, this, this is a true story, at least what I was told, okay? About 30 to 60 minutes before this raid occurs, this guy's walking to his car, the friend of my friend, and some guy hands him a gym bag. And he's like, just take this and get the fuck out of here. Someone he had just worked out with periodically hadn't. Yeah, this guy barely looked like he, he worked got out. Like some weird inside it, tip. It, it, it wasn't like a guy that was Jack that he gave it to. It was like some skinny fat nerd that had never taken drugs. But you know, meatheads take you under their wing. It's that kind of thing. So he's like, and he was big into recreational drugs. This guy, so he's like, no, what the, he gets in his car, dude. It was just filled with ten ml bottles of fucking everything. Juice. And he goes to my friend who used to work with me, and he's like, "What is this stuff?" And he's like, "Do you have oh, any fucking idea?" Like what, what you have, this is? Like, this is insane. But he was terrified because that's back when they were, they were swatting guys for, for, for steroids, yeah, for, which is retarded. Thinking it's like plutonium. Yeah, so it's yeah, like, exactly. so like, trying yeah. to make a nuclear bomb. Yeah, like see, we're making a, a, a dirty bomb of Trent and yeah. Nasser on it to fucking blow up Manhattan or something. Dude, so having retarded. you on, bro, is awesome. It's so retarded. You and I could talk for hours. I'm going to close this up for the next one because, dude, we are definitely going to do a third one. Of course, man. We could go on and on. It's and what the on. people want, Mr. Uzi. Dude, we have this is a good flow, <laughs> this one. Hope you guys are gonna definitely enjoy this because I always enjoy having Eric on. And thank you again, brother. Of course, man. My pleasure. All right, bro.